Hi, welcome to 3d-knowledge.com. Today we're going to be looking at heat exchangers, specifically the plate type heat exchanger. Now heat exchangers have a lot of applications. You can see here this one's a car radiator. You're cooling down jacket water using air and this prevents your engine from overheating. Another good example here is a home radiator and you'll be using a liquid, usually water, to heat up air and keep your home warm. So these are both different types of heat exchanger. But in the industrial world, there's only two types of heat exchanger, a shell and tube type and a plate type. This is an image of a plate type heat exchanger. And we're going to go now and have a look at the model on the website and go through all the parts and explain some of the features. The design of the plate type heat exchanger is actually rather simple. The heat exchanger consists of a series of plates and these plates are stacked one after the other. Between the plates, you will have warm and cold fluids, or at least warmer and cooler fluids. Now because the plates are relatively thin and they have a large cross-sectional area, they have a very high heat transfer rate, and this heat will be transferred through the plates. So I've gone to the website and I've loaded the model, and what we're going to do now is talk through some of the main components. We zoom in here, we can see here this is an end plate. The end plate normally has four holes, one, two, three, four, and these will be inlet and discharge holes. And the two others will be for a cold fluid, an inlet and a discharge. If we go further here, we can see a clamping bar. On the top here, we can see a guide bar. Further in, we can see a black gasket. It's actually made of nitrile rubber. Behind it we have a corrugated metal plate, and this is where the plate type heat exchanger gets its name. Further back we have more plates, and here this is a plate stack, which is what it looks like when all the plates are pressed together. We'll have another end cover here, which is removable, and as we can assemble all that, essentially everything will get pressed together. These clamping bars or screw threads will go into the holes here on the right hand side and it will all be clamped together to a certain torque using the torque wrench. So now let's have a look at how exactly it works. Here we can see the appearance of a plate type heat exchanger when all the plates are separated out. Now one of the most interesting aspects of the plate type heat exchanger is actually the nitrile rubber gaskets. That's these black gaskets here that run around the edges of the plate. And the reason why they're such a weird shape is because they're directing flow in different directions for each plate. As we can see here, the gaskets, they look similar, but each plate, one after the other, the gaskets will be rotated 180 degrees, and this rotation changes the way the fluid moves through the heat exchanger. Let's imagine for a moment that the plate has a fluid flowing through it, and this fluid is hot. So it would be coming through here and it would enter the plate space. Now each of these plates are pushed up tight against each other, so the fluid would only ever be able to flow up to the boundaries of the gasket. And the boundaries we can see here. And then once it's occupied the whole space within the gasket area, it will exit through this hole here. So we have an inlet on the top for the hot fluid and a discharge on the bottom. Now let's imagine that we have a different flow coming in and this time it's cold. Now the cold fluid is going to come in here and the same thing is going to occur again. It's going to flow up to the edges of the gasket, it's going to occupy the whole area possible and then when finished it's going to exit through this hole here. This will be the discharge for the cold fluid. Now you can notice that the fluid in the bottom here, the cold fluid comes in the bottom and flows out the top. On the other plate, the hot fluid comes in at the top and flows out of the bottom. This is known as contraflow or counterflow. It's the most efficient means of heat transfer, and that's why most heat exchangers will have counterflows or contraflows. It raises the efficiency of the heat exchanger. Now the gaskets that are forming the seal, these are not just ordinary gaskets. They're manufactured from nitrile rubber. They have a very good coefficient of elasticity. That means they can be heated up and cooled down without breaking. This is pretty useful if they're installed in the heat exchanger. 
They can also withstand temperatures up to 100 degrees, and this makes them suitable for a lot of industrial applications. You may have noticed that the plate isn't flat, it's actually corrugated. The reason for this is threefold. The first reason is that a corrugated plate gives it a larger contact surface area, and this contact surface area increases the heat transfer rate and makes the heat exchanger more efficient. The second reason is that a corrugated plate is actually stiffer than a flat plate, so you can manufacture a thinner plate, and this thinner plate has a higher heat transfer rate than a thicker plate. The third reason is that the corrugated plate creates turbulent flow. The turbulent flow prevents deposits forming on the plate, but it also has another function. It breaks down the boundary layer of liquids that may form on a surface. On the left hand side you can see linear flow. Sometimes you'll get a boundary layer of liquid on the heat exchanger surface. This inhibits heat transfer and thus reduces the efficiency of the heat exchanger. On the right you can see we have a turbulent flow. This removes deposits from the heat exchanger surface and increases efficiency as no boundary layer can form on the heat exchanger surface. The plates themselves can be manufactured from a number of different materials, ranging from titanium to different sorts of alloy, as well as plastics. Titanium would be chosen whenever the environment is particularly corrosive. Titanium has excellent corrosion resistance characteristics, but unfortunately it's incredibly expensive. Another disadvantage when using titanium is that any metal connected to it will normally act as an anode. When two dissimilar metals are connected together, one will be an anode and one will be a cathode. The anode will slowly wear away due to galvanic action. Any metals connected to titanium plates will need to be protected. And this can be achieved by insulating the plate from the dissimilar metal or by installing a cathodic protection system. Other chemical processes may not be able to rely on metal alloys or titanium, and in these special instances, the plate will be constructed of plastic or a polymer based material. The advantages with plate type heat exchangers are that they are smaller and lighter than tube heat exchangers. They're also more efficient when compared to tube heat exchangers of the same size. They're easy to dismantle and clean, and they don't need excess space to dismantle. Tube type heat exchangers do need a considerable amount of space in order that you can clean them properly. This is mainly because you need to pull the tubes out. Plate type heat exchangers don't have this problem. In addition to that, the turbulent flow in the plate type heat exchanger helps keep the plates clean and it also helps break down the boundary layer of fluids that build up on the plate surface. In addition to that, the plates are relatively easy to replace and you can actually increase or decrease the heat transfer capacity of the unit by adding or removing plates. The downsize to plate type heat exchangers is simply that they're expensive, or they can be if using materials such as titanium. Even the nitrile rubber gaskets themselves are quite expensive. It's difficult to find leaks because it's not possible to pressurize each plate individually. Normally you'll need to use a non-destructive testing technique in order to find a leak. The nitrile rubber gaskets themselves are also quite difficult to replace. They're adhered to the plate and are quite difficult to remove. On land, you could send the plate away to a factory and they would use liquid nitrogen to freeze the plate and the gasket and then simply knock the gasket off. Unfortunately, if you're in the middle of a desert or on a ship in the Atlantic Ocean, this is not really a feasible option. The only feasible option is to carry spare plates and replace the plates in their entirety rather than trying to exchange the gasket. Another disadvantage is that if you over tighten the clamping bolts when assembling, you'll actually crush the corrugated plates. This can seriously damage the plates and reduce the heat transfer rate. This reduction in heat transfer rate also causes a reduction in efficiency. A solution to this is to use a torque wrench when tightening the clamping bolts in order that you don't crush the plates. If you get a chance, go to the website, load up the plate heat exchanger model and then you can see it being assembled and exploded. You can click on the annotations to find out a bit more about what each component does. And then if you still need more information, go to the introduction page and there there's some text and it will tell you a bit more about the plate type heat exchanger. So with the text, the model and the video, you should really have a firm grasp of what the plate type heat exchanger does and how it does it. If you do like the video, please do subscribe. It really helps us. Thank you very much for your time.